live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent uh, Amazon Web Services reInvent 2016 user conference. 32,000 people, the center of the technology industry universe now. Um, I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. It's been packed house. Our next guest, we're excited to have the CTO of Rackspace, John N. Gates, uh, back on theCUBE here at reInvent. Uh, incredible milestone status to talk about. Congratulations. Welcome back to theCUBE. Well, thanks for having me back. It's good to see you guys. <laughs> 19 interviews yesterday. My, our voices are going, but we're going to go on and on today. So much going on here, I call it the center of the universe, because it's a consolidation of innovation. Yes, it is. And it's not a land grab, per se, it's, it's cloud. Yeah. You know a lot about that, you guys have served customers uh, going from hosting to cloud, now Amazon, you guys have some special news, what's the big news? Well, this week we announced that uh, we are part of Amazon's uh, premier partner uh, tier of their partner program, we're at the top tier, uh, we did it, I think, in record time. We went from basically launching about a year ago here. This was sort of the, uh, the place where we announced fanatical support for AWS uh, a year ago, and, and today we're in the top tier. We also have now over 500 certified engineers and architects on the AWS platform, so we're, we're really building up a, a breadth of expertise on this platform. We're helping customers make that migration to the cloud, and, really creating great outcomes for customers. Take us through the journey of Rackspace with, in relationship to Amazon, because what I find very interesting is that the innovation that you guys are doing really comes down to the um, heart and soul of Rackspace. Yes. You guys have been doing infrastructure for a long time. Yeah. Talk about your journey vis-a-vis -vis them, this new cloud world that's been spun to main, mainstream enterprises right. now. What, what is it all about? I mean, what's the big... Well, look, I, I get excited about cloud because it feels like the early days of Rackspace. Back in the early days, Linux was the new thing, the web was the new thing, customers were trying to get to those technologies and those platforms were the foundation for the next new thing for them. The web was going to be this you know, wild west and, and, and uh, frontier. And today, cloud is sort of representing that. It's the thing that com companies feel pressure and, and they feel excitement and they want to get onto these new platforms. I mean, all the announcements here are around things like machine learning and IOT and analytics and you know, really cool technologies that many enterprise companies don't know how to take advantage, you know, advantage of. They don't have the skills, they don't have expertise to take advantage of it, but they feel pressure to because of the fact that it's, it's where they differentiate nowadays. Yeah. Data is, is the true differentiation for companies. And so Rackspace you know, is in a position to, to help companies do just that. Uh, for many years, we've helped them get, you know, get up and running on infrastructure, get, use Linux, take advantage of open source, um, and today we're translating that heritage into services and support for AWS. Um, you know, we got enough inbound questions from customers like, hey Rackspace, we love what you do, we love your fanatical support, but can you do it on other platforms like AWS? You know, we're using those platforms, we're going to use multiple platforms, so it's not just just AWS, but can you help us across these different platforms? John, Rackspace is a really interesting place to look at kind of the hybrid cloud, multi-cloud world. You know, we're here at AWS, but I mean, you've got, you know, lots of different service you offer. You work with, you know, yeah. I think most all of the uh, cloud providers out there. What do you hear from customers? How do they, you know, when you talk to your average customer, do they use those terms? What do their situations look like? And maybe compare to that as to what you hear from Amazon. Yeah, well look, I think the word multi-cloud is certainly uh, on the mind of, of companies nowadays. This is something that um, they feel, again, a little bit of pressure to make sure that they have a couple of vendors in the, in the race. Uh, this is like multi-vendor of a, of a number of years ago. Everybody used to, have an HP and a Dell or an EMC and a NetApp, and, and today I think uh, it makes sense to, to have multiple cloud providers. Also, it depends on the layer of the stack that you're thinking about, because certainly they're going to be multi-cloud up at the SaaS layer. I mean, they're using Salesforce and you know, different uh, service offerings at that layer, and so multi-cloud is kind of uh, becoming it's sort of a given, and so when you start to think about the different layers of the cloud stack, um, you know, they may have private cloud, they may have public cloud, they may have more than one public cloud and they may want to keep the options open for where they place their workloads, especially in a geographic, global kind of a perspective. Yeah, 
offering those various offerings, do you help customers with kind of migrations or choosing or give them that decision yeah. tree? How, how do you help them uh, move well, forward? Well, sometimes, sometimes they come in with an opinion. You know, yeah. oftentimes they do. It, it's, it's like I, I tell people, I never, I never uh, convince somebody to move from Linux to Windows or Windows to Linux. They usually come in with an opinion about what they're going to do. And it's usually based on their skills and where they're coming from. And so oftentimes they come in with an opinion about which cloud provider or platform they want to use. But we do help them uh, really navigate, once they've sort of gone down that path, you know, what should I place where? Which kind of workloads yeah. are best suited for which cloud? Which particular application, uh, uh, you know, or which, which services within a particular cloud are the appropriate ones? Which ones are yeah. mature? Which ones should I you know, uh, adopt now or later? And, and I think those are hard things to know unless you've sort of been there and done it a number of times, and we do that yeah. with customers across the spectrum. John, I want to get your take on um, some of the themes here at the show. Obviously, Andy Jassy's on stage, Werner today. Yes. Um, the theme is pretty much old guard versus the new guard, uh, new way, old guard, references to Oracle and others. Right. Um, but really the buyer, Werner Vogel's like, hey, I don't want to buy it the old way. I want to you know, pay a big bunch of cash to get a discount. And I was talking to Peter Burris, our head of research, uh, earlier today, and the new guard and the new personas making decisions are changing yes. too because the capabilities are different. Right. You're seeing scale, speed, AI, machine learning, virtual reality, internet of things, whether it's consumer enterprise, the new game has changed. So when you're out engaging with customers, who's in the room when you're talking about this new way? Yeah. Who's sitting at the table? Because that defines kind yeah. of the new architecture. That's true, I mean look, in the, in, the, uh, in the past, the CIO had all the spend. He had all the, the, the you know, held the pocketbook for, um, for where IT spend went. But today, business units tend to sometimes drive the decisions, especially for net new applications, things that are greenfield, things that are con uh, consumer facing. We hear a lot of times that the, the CMO or the chief marketing officer is getting more and more wallet share you know, of, the, uh, of the IT spend. And, and um, that to me is an indicator that uh, you know, changes going on within organizations. Big changes are going on in terms of what they want to do. I mean, it, uh, IT is now a differentiator. It's not just a keeping the lights on behind the scenes kind of thing, but it's a thing that um, feel you know companies feel pressure to go uh, adopt cloud technologies because they feel like it helps them uh, have an advantage or at least keep pace with the, uh, the the other companies out there that are disruptive. And so, if you think about who's who's driving that, it's marketing folks, it's business units, it's product line leaders within organizations, and they're trying to make their products and services more compelling. Yeah. by tying them to the IOT world, like making a, a connected device versus yeah. just a, a dumb device, or having data presented back to the user so that they've got a better user experience. In the old days of, uh, when I grew up in the business in the 80s and 90s, you bought the big software and platforms because as a customer, they didn't have the expertise to build it. Right. And come the Facebook, Google era, they build their own stuff. They build their own you stuff. You guys built your own cloud. Now we're kind of going back to the world where, damn, Amazon's growing their scale so damn fast speed of new services, yes. competition's coming in. I'm a customer, I can't build, I can't build those services right. as fast, but yet I need to have some control. How do you uh, reconcile that, this new shift now that's happening where, I won't say it's multi-purpose cloud or general purpose cloud, it's general purpose sets of tools that can be composed. Yeah. So it's kind of a different animal, but the world is shifting where Amazon's shipping more capabilities then the customer cells can build. Yeah. So it's kind well, of shifting. It's, it's true, you're, you're drinking from a fire hose when you're thinking about you know, consuming Amazon's services because they're just coming at you left and right and you know, they're, they're really changing very rapidly. Even if you look beyond just the launches of new services, the iterations within existing services are going very rapidly too. And a lot of our customers are excited, but at the same time, they feel a little bit of, of concern about like if we adopt these too rapidly, what happens if our expert gets poached to another company down the street that's, you know, that's, that's got a bigger budget or, or more uh, interesting tech? And so they're reluctant sometimes to go too fast, too deep into these technologies. So I think that's, that's a balance that every yeah, company has to strike. intellectual capital with people is yeah, huge. That's right, that's right. You, you know, a lot of times uh, you know, companies are heavily invested in the existing expertise they have, the people that have been certified on technology platforms for their own entire career are now having to sort of rethink yeah. how they approach IT. And so, you know, we're, we're helping companies navigate that. We're giving them a little bit of a, a safety net. So it's when a, it comes do you de-risk that? You're looking at de-risking. We de-risk de it, we certainly do, because we give them 
uh, a backstop in terms of you know, expertise on all these different platforms. I mean, it is no longer simple like the LAMP stack. You know, it used to be one engineer could keep the whole stack in his head, or her <laughs> head, and now it's not so easy anymore because you've got this matrix of all these different services, all these different ways of composing applications, serverless and microservices and uh, you know, really complex uh, components, and that's hard to, hard to really be an expert on all of that. And so that's a way that Rackspace also really takes the risk out of it. John, I want you to give us a little insight into kind of the enterprise mindset. You know, we've interviewed you a bunch of times at, at OpenStack shows, uh, and it was very much, you know, a lot of it's an infrastructure discussion. And for years we're like, oh, is it private cloud? Is it right. public cloud? Is it safe? Is it secure? Uh, today, I try to fo follow, it's the data and the applications, right. and it's a little bit less of a discussion about like where it lives, right. uh, and more about, you know, where are the tools I need? Where can it have? You, you see a broad spectrum, is, is that kind of infrastructure versus applications, is that a good way to look at it, or how do you see it, what are the conversations well, I think, you have? Well, I think, again, and, you're, and you're- any commentary uh, on OpenStack, I'd kind of be interested too. Sure, um, I, I do think that the, the person writing the application or owning the data, the data owner, the person trying to, to build the new product is oftentimes in control of where, where something goes, and their needs have to be met for them to be comfortable or, or uh, you know, really be used, uh, effective in building an application. I mean, they really have to kind of take into account all the things they need. And um, I had this uh, analogy the other day in my head. I, you know, we oftentimes use the utility grid as the analogy for cloud, but I thought uh, instead of electricity, how about water, right? Water is something we usually get from the public utility. It's easy to get, you know, everybody uh, accepts that. But then there's companies and organizations that dig their own well. Why do they dig their own well? Because sometimes, geographic reasons dictate that they do. Sometimes they have a, a use case that's bigger or different than uh, you know, a typical consumer. And so I think that same thing applies in public and private cloud. I think we're going to have users that continue to see uh, use cases where a private cloud makes a lot of sense. I've had discussions here where companies are using both of those. They're using them for different applications. Sometimes they're using even, even together. And I just don't see, um, I don't maybe see it as, bi as, a big a, as big of a debate as it was in the early days of cloud, where like it was this religious war of public versus private. I think it's all of the above. I'm going to, you know, if I'm a big enough company, I'm probably going to have all of the above. So wait, is, is private cloud the artisanal bottled water that I pay a lot for, <laughs> uh, and public cloud is good, clean drinking well, water that you can what, get I don't know, I don't know if I it's, could uh, have <laughs> taken the <laughs> analogy that far, but it's, yes. it's certainly something that, um, you know, companies, uh, um, you know, they, they, they certainly know that there's a lot of options out there, yeah. they're going to use every option that's available, and they're going to make the best and use think, out of it. And I think now the world's changed to the top line drivers really yeah. are impacted to your business uh, unit driving that's some right. of the budget. That's right. And also choice. I mean, a multi vendor in the old world really came out of lock in. And that's right. So choice became a buzzword. Now choice is ultimately a toolbox decision for customers. Yeah. I don't think that makes it a you know, winner take all environment, but certainly gives the customer. Hell of a lot of choice. Got a lot of control, a lot of choice, a lot of options. Um, you know, competition is a good thing. Having people uh, building these competitive tools around AI and machine learning and and uh, IoT. I mean, yeah. we're going to have tons of opportunity to go build really compelling applications. Sometimes even mixing and matching capabilities from different clouds. I yeah. imagine that that will happen more. Uh, in the future than, than yeah. in the past. Stu and I are competitive strategy yeah. junkies. We, we think Amazon's strategy, I think Amazon's strategy is scale and speed, faster than the competition, right. leverage open source, go hard, run hard, and get the economies of scale, and people who try to replicate that right. won't have those, will have diseconomies. So it's interesting to see that play out. Yeah, John, uh, you know, Rackspace is now a private company, so yes. you've got the ability to kind of, you know, move uh, to towards where it needs to be. How important is public cloud in general and AWS specific for the future of Rackspace? Well, public cloud, public cloud is a huge investment for our company. I mean, we, we have uh, put a lot of resources into this, a lot of our um, new marketing campaign that you'll see out on the Las Vegas Strip and in, you know, in uh, news media, it's basically about um, you know, what we're doing with the public cloud. And, and Amazon is a great partner. They're, they're the fastest growing cloud out there. They're the biggest cloud out there. They're the one with the most mind share, I would say, in the market. And so certainly they are going to be a big uh, focus for us. 
But again, you know, people are going to uh, have a lot of choices in cloud and they're going to need, need help on all of those. Yeah, you're one of the, probably the largest service provider for VMware too though. Yeah. What's your take then? Do you have a play in the VMware on AWS or you know, how, how does that impact what you I don't guys know do? yet about the, Vita, you know, the VMware. I mean, it's a relatively new product and yeah. I think that's just getting started. Uh, you know, we do have a ton of VMware customers hosted in Rackspace data centers. A lot of those companies are looking to Rackspace to help them take steps to move some of those workloads to the cloud over time. We may end up you know, working with uh, the technologies that are available in the AWS cloud to make that easier if they work for us. If they don't work for us, we'll, one way or the other, we will get these companies to where they want to be and how, you know, however that makes sense. Well, congratulations on the fastest partner to yeah. achieve a, a premier status Absolutely. on the certification. Very excited about that. And it's no surprise, you guys have a great team of people. I mean, we've worked with Rackspace since you started cloud back in the, when the whole OpenStack, pre-OpenStack days. You built your own cloud, you guys done a lot of work, and uh, I think it's going to pay off for you guys. Well, Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, John Nengay, CTO of Rackspace, now a privately held company, which by the way, when that happens, innovation usually comes out of that, so <laughs> they're not on the 90-day shot clock, as Michael Dell will say uh, as, as well. This is theCUBE, back with more live coverage with Stu Miniman. I'm John Furrier, you're watching theCUBE. <laughs>